And welcome back to the morning show. It's time for morning rounds. We're talking to Dr. Matthew Kamen, a cardiologist at Christie Clinic, about your heart health. Good morning, doctor. How are we doing today? Good morning. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. So just to begin here, does heart health and heart disease affect men differently than women? Well, it affects them differently in the sense of how they present, both with symptoms and um, as far as their uh, likelihood of survival and complication rate. But heart disease is still the number one killer in both in men and in women. It's an equal opportunity. So uh, one in every three deaths, both men and women, are from heart disease. And it's, so it makes heart disease the leading cause of death in both men and women. But what's different is that because women have the hormonal protection, they present later in life. So the average age of a first heart attack in men is around the age of 65. Whereas in women, it's delayed a bit. Typically, uh, first heart attack on average is at the age of 72. Now, there are plenty of men that heart attacks occur at a lot of younger age. That's the average age. And you know, I've had patients as young as in their 30s and 40s in, uh, in men. And occasionally, you will see a woman that also may suffer a heart attack uh, in her 50s and, and 60s. But the average age, uh, again, in men is 65, women in 72. Women do present later in life. But again, women catch up to men and it's still the number one cause of death in both men and women. Um, what makes it a little difficult in women is that they, not only do they present later in life, but they also have what we would call more atypical symptoms. In other words, the classic symptoms of a heart attack, uh, which is crushing discomfort, pressure in the chest, uh, is, is more often felt by men. And that's the typical prototypical symptom that most people recognize as a heart attack. There are more subtler findings of a heart attack, such as shortness of breath or fatigue, tiredness, which you don't always think about your heart when you have those symptoms. Um, uh, and women are more likely to have that. That's what we would call an atypical presentation. Um, also, in both men and women, as far as the chest discomfort, it doesn't always have to be in the center of the chest. Uh, sometimes it's felt in the neck. Uh, in the jaw, a lot of times people are thinking they're having uh, something wrong with their teeth or a dental problem or a toothache, and it winds up being their heart. Um, back discomfort is not as common, but it certainly can present in the back. And most commonly also, the symptoms will radiate down the arms. And there's no specific uh, finding if it's right versus left. It can affect either the right or the left arm, uh, even whereas the left arm is more typical. Certainly, you can also have discomfort down the right arm as well, but really anything in the chest up to the jaw could be a pr presentation of a heart attack. Heart attack symptoms are typically pressure or squeezing or an ache, um, sometimes a burning discomfort, and so it's not uncommon to have heart problems manifest very similar to heartburn and reflux, and there are a lot of overlap in the symptoms and also the location, because your esophagus is in the center of your chest, a lot of times uh, reflux disease will present with similar location and a similar quality. Um, but what makes heart more likely is it's typically aggravated by activity. So you and your heart needs more blood flow when you're doing some kind of exertion, you're more likely to make the symptoms be more pronounced or bring them out and they get better with rest. Um, the other thing that's different in men versus women is because women present later in life, and also don't have the typical symptoms, they're less likely to present earlier compared to men. So they'll present later. Uh, they're waiting it out. Well, you know, I'm a little tired, I'm a little fatigued, just a little short of breath. Maybe it's, you know, I just have a little cold when they're really suffering from a heart attack until it progresses. So when they present to the hospital, oftentimes uh, they're at a later stage in their heart attack and they've lost more heart muscle. So they're more likely to have complications of a heart attack, such as heart failure, more muscle has been lost and some mechanical complications. Whereas men tend to present a lot earlier because men are just more, they're more hypervigilant, right? Because heart attacks are, you know, we just think of the typical man getting the crushing chest pain. So they're more apt to come into the hospital sooner. Also, because women present later in life, they're likely to have more medical problems that coexist with their heart disease, which increases the uh, severity of presentation, also reduces their survival when they have comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, sometimes rhythm heart, heart rhythm problems, uh, and just advanced age in general is a negative prognostic finder. So that also accounts for the difference between men and women as far as the survival rates and the complication rates. Um, um, as far as 
uh, lowering the risk of the heart uh, disease. You know, obviously heart disease, it's a systemic disease. It's a uh, disease of the blood vessels. And so um, treating your risk factors are key. So that's smoking. These are all modifiable risk factors. So smoking, if you smoke, obviously stop. Don't start if you don't smoke. Uh, get regular exercise. You want to live what's called a healthy lifestyle or a therapeutic lifestyle changes. So it's regular exercise. The minimum is 150 minutes of exercise a week. So that's 30 minutes, five days a week. But ideally, that's a minimum. You should be doing it every day if you can. And it's got to be uh, aerobic exercise, something where you get your heart rate up and sustain it, uh, such as exercising on a treadmill, or walking, jogging, running, biking, things where you're doing uh, aerobic activity. And then a balanced diet. With the diets that the Heart Association recommends, there's three diets. There's called the DASH diet. And it's an acronym that stands for Dietary Approaches of Stopping Hypertension. And it was a diet that was put out by the American Heart Association several decades ago. And it was actually a trial. And in the trial, it showed that people who followed this diet had an up to an 11-point drop in their blood pressure and up to an 11-point drop in their bad cholesterol, the LDL. Um, Mediterranean diet is another heart-healthy diet. It's a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables, uh, whole grains, lean proteins, in particular fish, uh, and chicken, and then there's a pesco mediterranean diet, which is a similar diet, but is strictly limiting uh, your plant, or excuse me, your animal protein to just fish. It also is a diet that's rich in uh, nuts, uh, beans, um, and so that's where you get your plant protein as well. And then extra virgin olive oil is another key feature of the Mediterranean diet. And lastly, the plant-based diet is a extremely healthy diet for the heart, um, if you can follow that as well. The key is you're avoiding processed meats, uh, and making sure you're eating simple carbohydrates, uh, lean proteins, and lots of fruits and vegetables. That's the key. Uh, the DASH diet has a little diagram of the diet, and half the plate is fruits and vegetables. If you can follow that, um, that will help with your blood pressure, help with your cholesterol, because both blood pressure and cholesterol are two of the major risk factors for heart disease. So by eating a heart-healthy diet, hopefully you could prevent those uh, problems from occurring so you don't need to be on medications for cholesterol and blood pressure. But if you're not successful, then you do want to treat both the blood pressure and cholesterol with medications. And doctor, if people have any questions whatsoever when it comes to their heart health, especially right now with the coronavirus pandemic uh, going on, what recommendations would you have for them? For the, what was that again? I'm sorry. If people have any questions right now when it comes to their heart health, how can they uh, reach out to Cl uh, Christie Clinic? What resources are available at Christie? Um, well, I, 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 calling the main line would be, would be helpful, and then uh, the helpline, and then that would direct you further. We do have uh, screening programs available. Um, not always does uh, insurance cover that, mm -hmm. um, but there's a, we have a coronary calcium scoring. Uh, which can be very helpful in risk stratifying uh, people or if people want to know if they have heart disease or plaque. Um, but be careful, sometimes insurance doesn't cover it. Uh, but, uh, sorry, I don't have the well, the main number to Christy. Oh, okay. that is totally fine. That's something that we can actually put on our website. That okay. is no problem whatsoever. Okay. Doctor, we appreciate your time for today, and we hope you have a great week. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Jack has your forecast next. We'll be right back.